Dice Paper Roll wish to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands upon which we meet, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, the Wurundjeri and Bunurong people of the Kulin Nation, and the Yagara people. Always was, always will be, Aboriginal land. doors bang open uh, slamming back on their hinges and the the mist begins to flow out at a faster rate it it rises up uh, in the courtyard to knee height and begins to flow out through the 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 gatehouse how are you going to do this well uh, have you still got those uh, fancy jumping boots mr sword and the guest toilets are just down the hall and, and along the right, uh, you go past the ballroom. You, oh, sorry, what? Uh, oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> hold on, everyone. Just one sec. Just give me one moment. Uh, my uh, my boots are leaping. Yeah, well, maybe I do. Maybe I do. Because maybe you could jump up there and then drop the boots back down and then we could all take turns jumping up to the high point of the window up, up, up yonder. Hey, look, that sounds great. Hey, everyone, he addresses the crowd. Take five, uh, go on free time, and I'll be back in just a second. Um, um, and Sonny walks up to the side of the, the castle and, and springs uh, up, up into the first floor window. Uh, and tries, okay. tries to tries to <laughs> land those castles it, with tries first to land floor it. windows. Yeah, those impregnable fortresses <laughs> with first floor windows, easily reachable. Yeah, <laughs> hey, I think okay. yes, and uh, Greg. Yes. that's a thirteen on my athletics check. So. Uh, that's a no, but you <laughs> leap <laughs> to. <laughs> that is a solid no, but uh, you you leap up um, to to attempt for a first floor window, um, which you realise is purely cosmetic. It's not actually a window; it's just uh, an outer casing. Um, you smash into it and fall back to the <laughs> the, the ground. God damn it! I, I should have remembered the plans. I remember the architectural drawings. They're all, of course, cosmetic. Ah, oh, false windows. You, false windows. You t- you take five points of falling damage. <laughs> and Ragyo, I feel like it's five points of idiot damage. Okay. <laughs> Ragyo walks up and clocks you over the top of the head with the healing mace. <laughs> you fool, Sonny. You is that, fool. Is that negate my five points of damage? <laughs> I'm hoping so. <laughs> or he does more damage. Sonny, Sonny, do you remember maybe there was any kind of secret passages with your... Uh, extensive knowledge of the castle. Oh, a secret passage? Why didn't you just say so? (sighs) He told me to jump up in the window. She told me to jump up the window, so I did that. Um, Yeah, just around, of course, just around here. Which one do you want? The one that goes straight to Strahd. Um, To the crapper. Well, if we only had the scrying mirror still, we would know. He looks at Louise and squints in like. (laughs) 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 Louise looks behind uh, at someone else and but <laughs> shares um, the squinting but this one this one goes to the antechamber of his private shitter 
Uh, and it's, and it's still... A yes and a secret door to his <laughs> private shitter directly to Strahd's private shitter, well, okay. he, which me... is in the tallest tower. Hang on a second. In the tallest tower, <laughs> and you are at the ground floor entry of an impregnable fortress. Hang on. Let me just clear this bush. I don't care how high your fucking history check is. Let me just move this bush. Hang on. There's a quick shortcut straight Whoa. to the top of the tallest tower. I'm not saying it's going to take there's us a, all the way there. There's but... a fucking turbo lift. Here. I think <laughs> probably he would have had like I think Strahd's got a very strong gardening thumb, and so he, when he's out on the grounds, and occasionally it gets close to three forty-five, and the regular he's route just ain't up. gonna fucking cut it. <laughs> so he's gotta take the... If only he could fly up no. with magic. Yeah, but that's <sighs> that's a spell slot, isn't it? <laughs> that's a wasted <laughs> spell slot. You get to the secret um, tunnel entrance and you clear some bushes, um, but the door is is solidly barred. Uh, it feels like maybe the the tunnel's collapsed on the other side. Damn, he must have. Uh... Oh, he must sealed have the sealed the secret entrance. Damn. Um, <laughs> it looks like it's the log way. Okay. Uh, the crowd behind you are getting <laughs> really hey, I said take free fidgety. time. <laughs> <laughs> Do whatever you want. Play croquet. Go in the hedge maze. I don't care. We we came here to, to kill Strada and I'm kind of, my bloodlust is fading while I wait here in the cold. The Devon should taste good though. Yes, I do like the scones. All right, well, I, I guess we use the front door then where jam all the cream. scary mist is coming out. Or cream and jam. Is there just a back door, Sonny? We do not have to do- go with the the uh, secret entrance that is game-breaking, but the yeah, one that look. actually gets us into <laughs> the... Into I, I, the... I think the right way to go is just over there, and Sonny points to the right way to go. <laughs> <laughs> I knew we had you here for a reason, Sonny. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's meta on so many levels. And it's right inside those big double doors. <laughs> the one spewing all the mist. All right, well, 72 smoke machines can't be wrong. It's a dance floor, people. Let's get amongst it. Okay, as as you and the, the, the mob, which... They're, as you start to move, their bloodlust lifts just a little bit more. Again, they're they're a bit excited. You were losing them for a second. Let's uh, kill Strahd. There's a few stragglers have have departed from the back. Uh, but hey, the, get, back get out of the bonsai garden! Come on! Listen, listen, everybody. It's very important you keep your bloodlust at just the right level. That like it's a seething fury that you still want to forge ahead, but. But you got to edge it. Yes, because you've got to be. <laughs> you've got, <laughs> you've got you just, to also be a little bit quiet in there. Do you, you do understand this, yes? As you're, you're giving your edging speech as you move towards the doors, <laughs> clutching the holy bone, um, you, you're giving this edging speech, and the crowd start to rile themselves up oh, around. And then hold you. themselves and back a little bit. They, they, they hold back, and then they rile right up to the. And then they hold back. And then they smack themselves on the back of the head, and then they rile right back up again. Hey, whatever it takes, you guys, whatever it takes. Oh. Um, <laughs> they get it. They get think really. Think about Gopal. Think about Gopal. Think about Gopal. Think about Gopal. <laughs> they get riled right up, and um, one or two of them just can't can't keep themselves in check. And as you're moving forwards, uh, a few villagers start to break forward, running um, and yelling and, and brandishing torches and, and pitchforks. And soon the whole crowd starts to move with them. So what what are you? They're all swelling. Do? So you're. They're swelling you all. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't really feel like I'm the one in control of this crowd. Uh, uh, George, like let's a, go, come on. Like any good mob, no one's in charge. Um, <laughs> uh, well, I think. Or just any mob. <laughs> I think maybe we should uh, use the knowledge that we have and actually go through the building. <laughs> Uh, you mean follow that angry mob? The mob surges around you <laughs> as you stand in the centre chatting about what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> like Come like on. a stone so in a river. Is this the, the finale to Curse of Strahd is the villagers kill Strahd and we just stand down the bottom <laughs> of the <laughs> By the time you guys figure out a plan, it probably will be the end. <laughs> hey, um, should we, uh, sorry, uh, 
Hey, uh, should we do the <laughs> the pretend plan? Let's yeah, let's talk about it some more. Come on. <laughs> and Sonny jumps up to the first floor window. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to do it. I've never killed Strahd before. Strahd! <laughs> well, I, I think once once we come into contact with Strahd, I think we do the whole kind of pretend thing. We make it so then the, the fucking... Uh, As you're running along, you're explaining <laughs> this to each other in this, like, surging, roaring uh-huh. cloud yes. crowd. Yes, talk me through talk me through this again, uh, Sasha. I just need to just verify exactly what I'm doing so, in this. So, uh, Amrena... God, uh, these steps are very steep. Okay, so Jesus. when... I mean, they've got no... The plane, according so, to the pitch, is just when, when we see yes. Strahd, uh-huh. and he's gonna probably monologue. Uh-huh. He's he's a villain, so he's gonna monologue at us, and then oh, that's when, a good plan. Yes, he will when, be when, definitely got a speech prepared for sure, and I'm sure it'll be about how much he so, loves Tatiana and blah 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 blah. Uh-huh. Exactly. Yes, for sure. And so then, hey, you, uh, have you prepared the illusion with the with the hole in the floor, and then Tatiana going invisible and jumping down? How does it work? Tell me. I'll, I'll be like, okay, you've angered the great old one, and then I'll say, and with that, you don't get Tatiana again. And then I I cast a spell called uh fucking something about uh. Illusory <laughs> terrain. Hey everyone, sorry, sorry. I just realized we're going and the wrong way. Sorry, you down the stairs fall again. Over. You'll see other, it too. It's this other set of stairs. Come on, oh, everyone. Shit. Okay, everyone, back. Upstairs. Sorry, sorry, everyone. It's, oh, it's you know when going floors, down is actually harder down, than no, going up. Oh, oh, down. down the corridor. So and when you see the hole open up. You fall over. You just like pretend to fall over like you're going to do a deadfall and then cast invisibility on yourself like you've fallen uh-huh. into the hole. Then right. he'll think but- you've fallen in the hole. Then he'll try and rescue you or he'll be so distraught he won't know what to do with himself. And then that's when we pants and we strike as one. Do you, do you think this is a good time to rehash the, the illusory plan that yeah, was yeah. sort of left on the, the sidelines. In, yeah, in the I mean, I, of- shouldn't we just find him when he's in his coffin asleep and just fucking kill him? I mean, oh, we God, have to kill him first. Uh-huh. And then are endless. He goes to the coffin. These, we kill him again. All right. These I'm empty hall cloak this. rooms are just, there's so many of them. I was them, a bit worried we? about it before, but um, it seems plausible. Like, honestly, I left my cloak like three rooms ago. And- Hope you got your ticket. <laughs> I didn't. Fuck. Why is there so many stairs? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, okay, okay. Here we are. This is the antechamber to the antechamber to the antechamber. Of the bog room? Just where I had okay. shitter. You enter. Okay. You you finally get through the maze of uh, cloak rooms, which were was the garden maze that um, Sonny had referenced earlier uh, around the back. You, you make your way through the maze of cloak rooms into the entry hall. It's a uh, huge... Fuck. The double doors uh, open onto the the huge entry hall. It's a massive uh, hall, runs hundreds of feet uh, into the distance. There are four sets of large double doors, uh, two on each side. There are a number of smaller doors as well. It's a a very high buttressed ceiling, um, maybe four stories tall. And at the end, there are another set of ornate doors. These are larger than all the others and they are bound in gold. They've got gold uh, working all over them. There's a huge, long uh, feasting table set up in the centre of this entry hall, uh, and it is laden with with foods. Now you think oh. the now you think the way would be the massive gold ornate imposing doors over there, and you'd be right. That's the way to go. Come on, everyone. The doors swing open and <laughs> oh, no. crack backwards with a clang, and you can see uh, at the, in that door at the back. Um, there's a, a separate, like, private uh, nobles dining hall, so a smaller um, dining room. It's up steps uh, behind the, the doors, up steps, and you can see a, a smaller table is set and there's a, a, a raised throne uh, behind the table and you can see a shadow sitting, uh, a, a figure in sitting Shit. in shadow <laughs> holding a goblet. Um, so, uh, guys, just... I just realized. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not using my voice. It um. It actually takes ten minutes to cast the spell. Shit. But <laughs> <laughs> I just look. I looked in my spell book. <laughs> and um. So it takes it takes ten fucking minutes, which is 
fucking <laughs> like a <laughs> hundred <laughs> rounds of combat. It's fine. <laughs> Sasha, Sasha, so, Sasha. You you cast the spell here. We'll find straw and and and, and lose. He's gonna monologue. He's got a monologue. He's I'm definitely going to monologue. Right, Wally monologues. We just keep him talking. Right, right, right. Just keep him talking. Okay. You can you can do that subtly, <laughs> okay. right? You continue to plan as the the crowd surges behind you, pushing you further into this uh, dining hall. <laughs> uh, and as you go deeper and deeper, the the crowd loses momentum because this this hall is huge and open, and and it's it's strange. This this huge feasting table laid out with the most delicious feast, roasted meats, vegetables, uh, delicious pastas. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and some pita bread. Oh. There are some, uh, like there's an amazing egg Hummus, the vegan there. options yeah. are amazing. Yeah. Like it's not so, just the salad. It's a bit odd actually. Hey guys, yeah. who who are the Lucamades? And um, <laughs> and Peter arrives with an Uber driver bag, like Uber Eats bag. <laughs> I'll drop these here and off you go. Um, and the, the crowd slows and uh, the the entry hall is is so long that most of the crowd have been able to enter into this this long hall and you are pushed to the forward uh, to the the front of this crowd. As they as they move in, they slow down, and everyone sort of stumbles to a halt, looking around. It's it's warm, it's well lit. There's fire in all the fireplaces. The torches burn brightly on the doors, uh, and the figure in shadow on the throne uh, suddenly a light seems to it, it it his shadow lifts. The shadow lifts from around him, and you can see the figure of Strad sat. One leg across his knee as he swells his goblet. Welcome. You've accepted my dinner invitation finally, and I see you've brought some extra guests. Little rude, don't you think? Well, uh, we thought it was a plus 100. Uh, plus 300. Uh, uh, Miss Red, the invitation. So, uh, so Sasha is going to like be working on her spell and casting it against one side of the wall, <laughs> making it so that the ten minutes spell. Yeah, so that it, okay. it, it'll blast out. Do you try and hide under That's the table the idea. or anything? <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's just like um, just muttering to Irina herself and can moving her hands over around to. to uh, can she <laughs> cut? Uh, Irina can make somebody else invisible. Yes. Um, so she just shuffles over and touches um, Sasha. Sasha on the shoulder and just be like, make it snappy, okay? Um, she's going to cast, yeah, invisibility Come. on her. Come on, great old one, make this snappy. Okay, so uh, Sasha goes invisible. Um, as the spell finishes, the usual pop is um, is drowned out by a huge clang as the front doors slam shut behind the crowd. Oh, it's a trap. This whole thing has been a trap, hasn't it? I've been waiting to have you for dinner for so, so long. Hang on, did he mean have us over for dinner or have us for dinner? All of the doors on the sides of the entry hall slam open and thick mist begins to pour into the room and the crowd, frightened and suddenly uh, disoriented, spin around as the mist begins to flood into the room, raising in height. It's it's almost to their waist. Oh, but, precipitation's the worst! Yuck! Oh. Um, one by one, the torches start to go out from the entry of the entry hall backwards. They're snuffed one by one and the room begins to fall into complete darkness as the mist rises up and up. 
it's at it's it's at waist height now. So you are at the front of the crowd. Um, you're closest to the golden double doors and the noble dining room. The uh, entry the entry hall is a, a very long rectangular um, space with a huge feasting table in the center. The crowd are arrayed behind you on either side and the sounds of panic are rising behind you. Um, it's as these doors slam open, the mist begins to flow in. Uh, can everyone give me a perception check? Uh, do you want me with disadvantage? Yes, please. Ooh, eight. Eight, also for Sunny. Oh, one, one, one. 20 for Ragyo. 25 for Ragyog. Wow, Irina and Ragyog, you, uh, you notice red eyes begin to emerge low down to the ground through the doorways. Um, and just a moment after those eyes sort of skitter through the mist, um, you begin to hear screams as individual villagers are, have their legs taken out from under them and are pulled down under the mists. Hmm. Don't worry, good buddies. Don't worry. I've killed him once. I can do it again. And uh, the meat puppet raises Sonny, the high, the energy sword in his arms as he prepares to to charge up the steps to the throne and uh, engage. The light glows like very brightly, and but it, it seems to touch the top of the mist and stop. It's like the mist is like a thick fog. You know when you like shine headlights into a, a fog, and it just doesn't seem to go anywhere. The light sits on top as it continuously. St- uh, it continuously rises around you. Ragyog um, yells out, Hold your resolve, people of Barovia. Strad, it's been rude of you to invite us all here and then turn out all the lights. Lathander will light the way and holds out his uh, holy symbol and I'm going to cast Daylight <laughs> in the chamber. On the um, holy symbol? Uh, yeah. Okay, so you well, uh, well from from the holy symbol, so that it sheds down onto like the table and the the villages and on the mist. So that some they, particularly shiny plates. Yeah, you go. We need to be able to see to yeah. eat. The 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 um the holy symbol shines with daylight, and it's it's equivalent. Um, Sunny's uh, Sunny shines with a similar light, and the two. The two sources shine out brightly in the still available space, but you, you, the mist is still, you can't see through it. And as it raises up this, this roiling, boiling mist around you, this, this mist that has layered on top of the fear of Barovia for generations, the crowd begins to panic. This mist means death. To them. This mist means terror. This is the thing that keeps them in their houses at night. Strad and this fucking mist. And you can hear the breathing of the crowd behind you. It, it They are in full panic mode. There are screams. There are questions. People are crying. You can hear someone banging on the door with their pitchfork at the back. And that mist continues to rise up. And like you, so, this your happened- lights shine brightly, but um, you're all standing there, and this the crowd behind you are, are milling about. This happens like over ten minutes, would you say? Or like <laughs> <laughs> you no. have you have bought your last dry ice machine. Strad and Sunny charges and attacks uh, and makes makes an attack on um, on Strad. Okay, so Sunny breaks forward and starts running up the steps. What is everyone else doing? Uh, like in in all reality, like actually, how long do you think that that time has? <laughs> I'm not I'm not like gonna be able, I'm not 12, gonna be able to get this ten minute maybe twelve spell. eighteen seconds. Absolutely not. Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck me. God damn it. Should have read that before. Ragyog races to support his companion, um, but stays back a little bit because, you know, I'm a cleric and I do things better from afar. Uh, Irina also (laughs) uh, hangs right near Ragyog, though she uh, wields her hands into a stance to be casting her first witch bolt any 
second now, but instead is also a little bit further back. Um, just keep that bone real close to me, okay? <laughs> Ragyo. Yeah, Ragyo, you're short. You're, you and Sasha are up to your necks in mist now because you're shorter than everyone else. Um, you, you, the the mist is, is very high on you. You're basically swimming through it. Um, okay. So as you're walking, like, you're just a disembodied head above the mist. <laughs> um, everyone else sits up to up to your waist. Okay, so um, Sasha and uh, Louise, what are you doing? Uh, Louise uh, launches onto the onto the top of the um, table or the dining table, yeah. and um, and it seems as if you can hear the neighing of a horse as. As, as Curly the horse emerges through the mists Still and dancing. onto the um, onto the uh, the the dining table, and Louise launches herself on top of uh, Curly as she casts Fine Steed. Amazing! You you summon Curly, and he rides in through the mists, uh, circling the table and, and up onto the feasting table, scattering dishes as you mount on yeah. top of Curly. Yeah. Would you say Sasha. the clip clopping of the hooves through the mist is a bit more like cabbages than coconuts clapping together? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> because there's lots of cabbages on the yeah, sure. on yeah. the dining table. Yeah, just. This is just for for you, the audience, to, yeah. to, <laughs> to really, really imagine really. the foley that we could have done. Yeah, um, <laughs> Sasha. It actually, it actually sounds like. Oh my God. <laughs> no, Jack, get it, put it away. Come on, Jack. Um, Sasha, <laughs> fuck, realizing that everything's happening too quickly and is not going to have enough time to cast this spell. Uh, she climbs up onto the dining table as well to remove herself, uh, to get as much height above the mist as possible and starts uh, creeping slowly towards the edge uh, as, you know, closer to, to Strahd. But she's invisible at the moment. Okay, so Sasha is going to climb up on the table mm -hmm. to get a bit of height over the mist. Mm -hmm. And then she's... Is she... So the, the others are rushing forwards. Are you with them or are you back with Louise? Because Louise is back on the, this table. There's this long room. The rest are rushing forward. Are you with them or are you back with Louise? Just I'm back with Louise. Um, Amazing. L Louise reaches out her hand to Sasha and says, I'm invisible. Oh, fuck. <laughs> she, where she thinks Sasha is. Yeah, she reaches out <laughs> to where she thinks Sasha is and, uh, and yells out, Get on! Wherever you are, Sasha. One of the villagers. <laughs> to charge. Oh, oh thanks. thanks. Yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't mind. Yeah. <laughs> My name's Sasha too. <laughs> <laughs> this, and I'm <laughs> Sasha. No, I'm and I'm Sasha. And I'm, and I'm Sasha. Sasha. <laughs> and I'm Sasha. <laughs> I'm Sasha too. There's I'm room, Sasha. There's room in the You're horse Greg. for everyone. Amazingly, Curly's Sasha. like very strong and carries all of the Sashas of the village. Sasha doesn't climb on the on onto Curly. She okay. stays so just on got the some table random and keeps distance because she has an AC of twelve. Okay. Sorry, Greg. I just want to confirm: in the next room beyond the table is the double doors, and then there's the throne in there. So it's a separate room. No. So the end of you're in the entry hall. Yes. Yeah, it is a separate. There's the nobles' dining yeah. hall, which is the end. There's the gold double doors. They're open. As you go into that room, there's a couple of steps up, and then a raised table with a a big throne sat behind it. Right. Okay. Oh, um, right. Okay. So Sasha and Louise are on the table with the the crowd. Mm -hmm. The others of you rush forward, and as you step onto the steps, the doors behind you slam shut, closing off the rest of the dining hall. Um, okay. Fuck. Now, yeah. Um, it's cool. It's all right. All right. Sunny, you charge forward uh, with your blade ablaze. The light um, that accompanies uh, you two is snuffed out in uh, as the doors close. And in the, the feasting hall, all 
plunges into pitch blackness as the mist continues to arise around you. Sunny, you charge forward the um, the three, four of you, Morty is with you, the four of you um, racing up the steps towards Strahd. The doors slam behind you and uh, Sunny, as you got the jump, you run forward uh, with your sword to attack Strahd. Do you want to give me an attack roll? 20! Yes! Yes! yes. yes. Amazing. You run up the steps, clearing the last step. You leap off um, a sword in two hands as you soar through the air. It you, you seem to slow down. Time slows down as you as you mm-hmm. fly through the air in a perfect arc. The beer gut of the meat puppet ripples in the in the <laughs> <of> ripples. The <laughs> <in the wind. laughs> And you crash into the chair and bury the sword directly between Strahd's eyeballs as it plunges through into the back of the chair and the image of Strahd flickers (gasps) and disappears. Sick burn. Sick burn. Okay. Got me. I I can make a second attack, but there's no one there to make another attack. There is no one there to make another attack on. There is. You can attack the chair. There is the peeling of an enormous bell, a sonorous bell. Uh, note that rings through the whole castle. It comes from far, far above, and this this bell clangs, and then you hear it crunch through the stone above. And as you 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 can feel the stones around you shaking, and as you look up, dust begins to rain from the ceiling <laughs> in the nobles. Um, <laughs> 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 oh, no. Uh, Not dust. It's kind of um, salty. In the, ah. in the nobles dining room, the Mine's roof kind collapses. of sweet. Tastes like pineapple. Can, every, can everyone please, uh, in the dining room, make a dexterity save? The nobles dining room? That's the four yeah. of us? Yeah. Yeah. All right. 19 for Sunny. 19 for Ragyo. 21. Okay, everyone. uh, So, Sunny and Ragyog, you take 30 points of damage. Uh, Irina, you take 15. Yeah. What? (laughs) From all the crumbling (laughs) stuff. Uh, As the roof collapses on top of you and the huge um, bell falls through the ceiling. So this huge bell high in the tower has been cut loose and is slammed through multiple levels of the floor. So as it hits each floor, you you feel the boom through the walls, the the stones shake, the dust comes down from the ceiling until the, the, the ceiling above you collapses and this bell crashes through the ground. Um, the, the room around you, the walls, the castle around you collapses and you tumble through blackness as you fall down with this um, this falling bell. Um, Irina, you are able to ride the wave of debris a little better than the others. Um, but as the as the Whee! bell crunches, <laughs> we as the bell crunches um, to a halt, uh, the dust that you just there's a huge dust cloud around you. Um, <laughs> <and> <laughs> Oh, the back of the throat. That's the worst place. It's coming out my nose. Like a dust dragon. <laughs> okay, so um, Sunny and Irina, you two are um, you are near each other in the rubble. The you can see the bell sort of tipped on its side uh, next to you, but there are like mounds, huge mounds, piles of rubble. You're actually in an enclosed space and you can hear the rocks sort of shifting and crunching above you. There's a, there's an exposed stairwell to your left. I guess we got to take it. This is not a Stuart Diver situation I want to get into. To the stairs. All right, I'll go first. You need to stay safe. He wants yeah. you bad. Sunny leads the way, tip tip first. Okay, so your glowing tip guides you into the um, into the stairwell, and it, the stairwell uh, leads both down and up. But you can see rubble fills the the downward space, so you you follow the steps up and around. And this this is one Look, of the those. Sh- the shitter's up anyway, so this is the way it goes. <laughs> 
Well, you know this is actually one of the secret uh, passageways. Um, the, uh, the it would have led you <laughs> into this very stairwell had you been able this to open it. This is where door. I wanted to go. Here we go. Here we <laughs> hey, hang on. Wait, wait. Did you see? You didn't see Ragyog back there, did you? I didn't see anything. Well, look. I saw you put your swords through Strahd, and he just disappeared. And yeah, it was some sort of illusion. And right, it was look, Bing Bang just... Boom. Now we're here. We just gotta persevere. We're in deep trouble. We have nowhere else to go. All right, onward. Onward. You follow the steps up, um, and it winds around and around as it passes the main body of the castle. You climb like ten flights of of winding steps as you head further and further up this secret staircase uh, until you reach the first exit. It's uh, it's the back of a painting. Um, and you can see there are two eye holes. <laughs> one, what, what do you say? Uh, two pairs of eye holes cut cut into uh, the painting. Do you want to be the... Got to have a go of that. Let's, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take these ones. You have a look through there. All right. <laughs> Squish my head up against this, the canvas. I'm like, well, it smells bad. This is Sonny gets down to his knees and takes the lower of the two eye holes. Super good. <sighs> So we're going to take a picture of us at the other side? So. Yeah, what's on the other side? I had a great time in Strahd's castle. <laughs> Here's the mirror. You'll be able to see what it looks like on the other side. Um, you peer through the eye holes uh, into a bedroom. Um, it's got a large four-poster bed and a, a large ornate fireplace uh, with a high mantle. And as you both gaze through together... It sparks a memory for both of you. <clears throat> a deep-seated memory. It sparks the memory of the sword for you, Sonny. The sword sitting on the mantelpiece. It's one of your earliest mem. It's it's a memory of the sword, so it's not associated with Sonny himself, but it is associated with the sword's consciousness. You remember Tatiana reaching up and touching the sword here. Hey, I used to chill here. Or something. This was Chard's chamber. <gasps> yeah. Good vibes in this room. Oh, shit. I just remembered what this painting's off. Oh. <laughs> it's going to look pretty funny on the other side, I tell you what. <laughs> wow. It's pretty uh, still <clears throat> intimate. <laughs> Still on that mantelpiece, you can see uh, a plaque that held the sword, the crystal sword on top. And your mind is cast back to that night where you first gained real consciousness. It, there'd been flashes of it before, during battle, when lives were taken. But this was where the sword truly came into its own self. You remember, and Irina, you remember this night too. It comes as a hazy, distant memory, different to the other memories that you have now recovered. This one sits deep within your soul. You remember dressed in finery, sweeping into this room to meet with your lover. And you reached up and touched crystal sword on the mantelpiece its razor sharp blade slicing your finger and a single droplet of your blood falling on its blade you remember Tatiana felt different after that day somehow empty the memory fades and the the lit up warm room that you remembered is replaced by this quiet cold dusty space well weird deja vu yeah yeah like a lot uh I think Tatiana had a lot to do with this room, had a lot to do with you. Yeah. I remember, well, I don't, I don't remember, but Tatiana remembers 
touching the sword, a drop of her blood falls on the blade. I, I think that's, I think that's when she, when you gained consciousness. Yeah, like, I, I, there's a feeling of that. It's not quite a memory, but some sort of something in my hilt. You know, it's it's deep. What does that like, mean? I remember being back and squashing the rights of the minorities, and then I was here. <laughs> All of a sudden, I don't know what it means. I think, I think. I don't know. We, we are the only ones who can take him down. I think it's time. And the mate puppet's fingers, one by one, drop off the hilt of the sword as he lets go of Sonny, who clatters to the ground. And the meat puppet's eyes kind of bug out in his skull <laughs> as he looks at Irina. <laughs> oh, God! This poor distraught man just coming to <laughs> in the oh. fucking insides of the oh. dusty spiderweb-ridden mansion. Oh. He steps backwards in fright and falls down the stairs. Oh. Ten flights. <laughs> Breaks his neck and dies. <laughs> Wilhelm screams all the way down. <laughs> <laughs> Irina looks at him go and sort of just looks down at the sword um, and uh, well I I just I don't even know she doesn't know if, if she picks up the sword if she's still going to be Irina or if she's going to be Tatiana but like I said before I've come this far right yeah you don't know. If I'm not Irina, then farewell, Ishmark, and the other one. Farewell, everything. Well, there's nothing left to do now, but, um. Stroke that pummel. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that dusty pummel. <laughs> so she picks up you, the sword. You hesitantly grasp the hilt, um, and as you lift it up, Nothing changes. You're still yourself. Some may be a little stronger in yourself for taking this step. You hold the hilt in front of you and the shimmering blade erupts, lighting the chamber. Cool. Okay. <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Ragyog, you are momentarily knocked out as this bell crushes through the, the roof and, and the, the rubble collapses around mm -hmm. you. You uh, awake and um, you <laughs> are... You, you're alone in the darkness. The, the light from your um, holy symbol next to you is obscured by rubble that's laid on top of it. Uh, uh, can, I, can I see anything with my dark vision? Uh, you could see, like, uh, the shapes of rubble around you. There's um, spears of light as the, the daylight from the emblem breaks through the, the, the covering of rubble on top of it. Um, and, uh, the, the light, it lights up the, the, the edge, the side of the bell you can see is collapsed. There's a huge crack in the bell. Um, but you, you're alone in a, a small pocket space. All right. Am I, uh, push any rubble off me, <laughs> pushing any, any bits that I can to, and, and scrabble to get the, uh, the holy symbol back. Lathander, Lathander, don't abandon me now. And I scrabble at it with my clammy goblin hands. You are able to uncover <laughs> the the holy symbol, and you you pull it out from from the debris around you. And um, as it lights the space, you can see there are some gaps in the rubble nearby that you you could possibly worm your way through, like um, manage to squeeze your way through. But there's no there's no clear escape. Yeah, and and no sense of direction. I don't imagine of of where 
no. everything is and where the rooms are. Okay. No, you don't know where you are. You know that you've fallen a fair distance. All right. Look, they had to guide me, guide me in this hour of need and I'd go the only way that there is. Well, there's, there's, there's a couple of spaces, but you, you clutch the holy symbol of Lathander and, and you close your eyes and you feel the bone vibrate at your hip. Throb it. <laughs> it throbs against your <laughs> pelvis. I pick it up and um, hold it to my ear. Hello? <laughs> it vibrates <laughs> against <laughs> it vibrates against your ear, but it seems you it wants it wants to point you in a direction. Ah, so you know Just what I thought you were. answer at the on the bone. <laughs> um Hello, my name's Lathander. Oh, I don't want to talk to you right now. Um, <laughs> following that, that, um, that feeling, um, Ragyog holds his hand out, his arm, and and the the bone vibrates in a certain direction, and and I follow that direction. Yeah, like a water diviner, you follow the bone um, towards one of the the sort of um, bolt holes, the the gaps in the um, the debris, and you manage to squeeze your way through. And as you're you're crawling through, you can hear the rubble shifting above you and and dust and rocks um, rain down on you as you're you're moving through until just at the edge of hearing, you can hear uh, moans of pain. Um, as you you head down, you you emerge into a larger open space, and you can see you're you've come around the side of this enormous bell, and uh, you can see the bell is pinning a figure to the ground beneath it. Um, the lower half of Morden Kynan <gasps> is obscured um, under the bell, um, and he groans in pain as he clutches at his guts. Belly welly, Morty. Morty, are you okay? Oh. I rush over. Rag. Oh. Oh. Morty, don't die. Don't die. I quickly assess the damage. He is very, very badly, um, <laughs> very badly hurt. No, he's very badly hurt. Um, his his guts are ruptured. You can see he's bleeding heavily. He's crushed. Um, he's been crushed under the bell. Oh, my gosh. Morty, No. No, you can't die. And I hold the bone up behind my head in both hands and bring it down and whack him. Put him out of his misery. (laughs) (laughs) At the same time as I cast. (laughs) You coup de grab or to cut. (laughs) (laughs) That was some midsummer shit right there, man. That was messed up. (laughs) No, at the same time as I cast. um, A cure, uh, cure wounds as a fourth level spell. <gasps> wow! Okay. Yeah, the the cure flows through the holy bone, and as you slam it into his chest, he vomits up um, the blood from the internal bleeding uh, of the crush damage, um, and his color his color returns to his cheeks. The heal helps him stabilize um but he is still pinned underneath this bell and yeah. if he's left for a long period of time you know that he will die yeah i didn't really uh i mean i'm a cleric not a not a wizard morty i can't really do the really strong movie things can't you um isn't that can you cast spells how are you going there morty <laughs> we shift this oh uh, yeah <laughs> I, As I'm pushing cannot, against the bell. I can't, no, no, please. No, you're shifting it. Fuck. Oh, <laughs> oh God. Right. No, I can't concentrate long enough. Ragyog, you're going to have to. What do I do? To leave me and my ninth level spells here. Oh, oh. <laughs> what, what oh. was the fucking point of you then, Morty? Well, I was, I was, I was here for a lot of exposition, but. Oh, oh I, I, you know, I, I took Strad on on my own last time, and uh, it's time to pass the torch. Yes, I'll I'll just lay here, have a little rest. And, well, could uh, you just maybe cast a bull strength on me or something, and like, you know, <laughs> really I've, I've, give me some. My big... abdomen is completely crushed. I really, I can't feel my legs. I'm, I mean, you're talking very, fine. I can't, can't... Really concentrate on a spell. Uh, all right. Somebody in the arcane energies is not just talking. It's well, it's... okay. Would well, you want to give me a powerful item and send me on my way or something? <laughs> I really, I really think you're over character wealth oh, for your, <laughs> you, you've got plenty. I mean, I've got the bone, 
I've got the amulet. Uh, I'm going to go through all my yes. pockets, listing all the things You've that I've got. got. I will say the great old two one gods, is the bad guy. The, the great old one and, and Lathander. Balance. You must. You must make the choice, Ragyog. I've already made my choice, Bordy. Oh, good. Well, kind of good line wasted, but fight no rule. <laughs> he passes out. <laughs> I gently tuck the end of his pubic hair braid oh. beard behind oh. his ear and pat him on the cheek with my clammy hands. It's like, yeah, a- I'll be back for you, Bordy. It's a reverse Merkin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I. It's a Nurkum. <laughs> Gross. I look around for uh, another way out. Is there anyone else in the room? Can I hear anyone? No, you can't hear anyone. You can hear um, faint screams and battle far above. You can um, hear the sound of a scream and someone falling down a long set of stairs. <laughs> <and then laughs> breaking at the bottom of the. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> a total Homer Simpson falling down the roof. <laughs> yeah. You do hear that. It's... Um, it's <laughs> <coming>. <laughs> uh, it seems to be coming. Um, from behind a wall, and as you head to towards that, you come across a stairwell. Um, and as you move into the stairwell, this one leads just directly into the room that you what used to be the room that you're in. Um, and as you step in, there's a wall on one side, and blood begins to pool like underneath the wall to your side. So it just begins to sort of float out under the bottom stones um, uh, and, and pool around your feet as you. Yep, I think Strad's toilet sprung a leak. Um, <laughs> he should really get that Stool. checked out. <laughs> uh, that sounds like a this, bowel cancer. Not anywhere I want to be, and I start going up. Okay. You uh, head up the stairs and this is, uh, you, you head up, this this stairwell is a normal access stairwell. So as you go up, there are multiple doors um, that you pass. You, got, you only go up two flights and, and what's equivalent to two flights and there's a, there's a door on the side. <clears throat> it's just a normal wooden door, uh, no ornate um, carvings or or anything like that. Yep, just a um, noble wooden door. <laughs> so you're going to check I'll, the door? Do I'll wanna... listen at it, yeah. Can I yeah, hear yeah. You, okay, so give me a perception, please. Yep. Uh, that is a 17. Uh, you can hear deep, he- heavy breathing on the other side. Like a raspy, hungering breath. <laughs> and as you listen longer, you can hear it's multiple breaths from multiple creatures. <laughs> And I'm not going in there, am I? <laughs> Keep going up. You go up another few flights and there's another door. Uh, check behind it. You, you open this one. <laughs> Close the door. <laughs> up to the next there's an empty. There's an empty storeroom uh, behind that one and there's like this old uh, crates that are rotten and broken open. Um, so... Uh, but it's it's empty. It's just filled with cobwebs and so much dust. Um, oh, gross. You continue to head up, uh, checking the doors one by one. Some yeah. have um, sounds behind them. Um, you come across, you know, more of the ones where there's the the heavy breathing in the the background, um, and it doesn't it doesn't sound good. It sounds like a zombie film. In there. It's yes. not. It's not a great. Uh, it's not a great feeling. Um, but as you come up, <laughs> 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 
I have to say that so far there is absolutely nothing behind these doors that sounds in any way appealing. Okay, so you continue uh, to head up um, and you reach another door. This one, as as you get higher and higher, you feel like you've passed the level that you came in at. So you're continuing to to climb up the tower. Um, and, and as you, you climb up, this door, the next door that you come to does have an ornate um, ornate carvings into the, the iron bindings around the wooden door. Right. What do they look like? Uh, it's just a, like a swirling pattern. So the, the, the normal iron bindings are very plain. These ones have those like curved thorns on the side and it's like swirling patterns within the, the iron bindings. All right. No, um, no strange music coming from no behind sound. them or weird. All right. I'm going to open the door. Okay. You quietly. Okay. <laughs> Can you give me a stealth? Where's your sound effect? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! One, the one time Greg didn't Five. load up the door sound. Effects. Yeah, yeah, it's a twelve all up. A twelve. Ragyog puts out his clammy hand. The third uh, leaves a mark on the door. guide the way. Uh, wipe it. Uh, it so splats. Happy. It splats against the door <laughs> with a wet sound, <laughs> like a frog latching on. And as you. Push it open. Oh, that's a very different sound to any other door in Barovia. That does not <laughs> bode well. Now, someone's paid for the premium. <laughs> <laughs> we got another patron. Yay! Yay! Yay. Yay. Extra sound uh, effect. We can afford another one. <laughs> we can afford another door sound. Uh, um, <laughs> the door creaks open. And you can see a uh, – you, you, it opens onto Strahd's study. So it's this a richly carpeted room. The walls are covered in bookshelves and there are all sorts of arcane tomes bound into the shelves here. Some are, are linked with chains um, to the walls around. There's a huge ornate desk that faces uh, the window and another door on the other side and a, a large high back chair. They dry ice manuals on the desk. <laughs> yeah. Stage crap. Spare parts. There's a workshop bench in the corner <laughs> yeah. where he fixes. This is the dry ice machines. I quickly oh. sift past those. Nope, nope, not of interest, not of interest. The head, guide the way, guide the way. Can I, I'm going to roll a perception to, or an investigation to see if I can find like an interesting Strad's bookie wookie. Uh, yeah. That, uh, that's a 12. Stradi wadi's diary wari. Okay, you, you've, you're quickly able to discern that the books on the bookshelves are all about magic, arcane magic. So they're, they're all books of arcane study. Um, but you you get to the the desk and only Strad's Bookie Wookie um, is on top. It's a... It's not as big as you thought. It's it's about A5. Um, it's pink. It's got a fluffy edge and a lock on the side of it. It says my diary on the front. <laughs> and there's a matching <laughs> pen with a fluffy end. Yep. Yeah. That, that looks like what I'm looking for. It's, uh, let's have a look. I lift up the... Is there a key? Uh, no, there is no key. <gasps> yeah, all right. All right. I open it. I stroke the there cover. There is a lock, though. Stroke the cover um, with my clammy hands. <laughs> there is a lock on the side, but there's no key. So you, you go to open it. The lock uh, holds. Do you want to make a strength check to try and break it open? <laughs> yeah. Morty didn't cast bull strength on me, did he? No. <laughs> oh, that's all right. 18 on the dice. Oh, you're easily able to snap this cheap uh, pink, news agency lock. <laughs> Teenager's diary. <laughs> Uh, Teenager's diary. Ragyog still gives himself a little fist pump, though. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you you do. Um, you snap it open, and um, it it falls open to a uh, a note um, that Strad had written himself, and it's it's dated from just after you all arrived. Oh, what does it say? <laughs> Let's have a look. <laughs> it, <laughs> New guests have arrived. They seem promising, although 
troublingly close to Tatiana. Mm. I will have to keep an eye on them. Mm. This Mo character interests me. Mo. Mo. I miss you, Mo. I keep reading. Um, you flip another few pages. How much more has he written? <laughs> Because it just goes on and on about Mo. It's just, yeah. Yeah. It's just so much about <laughs> Two Mo. or three pages. There's like four them. or five entries. And her fingerless gloves. She had the best <laughs> taste in music. Her rave skills were off the chart. Those long <laughs> bell-bottom pants. My God. I've never seen anyone handle poi like that. Then, then he's just got like two pages of him just like drawing that like diamond S. <laughs> You know, like, <laughs> so doing, like, just yeah. multiple different versions of that. And his signature. Yeah, and trying to, like, do a tag and that kind of thing. You Tatiana know. and Strad forever with, like, forever. hearts on it. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Strad Tatiana, like, over and over again in script mm. curses. There's a line here that um, says... <laughs> this, this, this parts of him trying to draw Tatiana, but he only gets like the first eye, which, and then he tries mm. to do the other one and fucks it up. <laughs> it and he keeps going, goofy. he's really not very good at drawing. Pages yeah. and pages and pages. Yeah. Of like, yeah, he still tries like, to draw boobs, though. Yeah. 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 Lots so of many boobs. <laughs> There's, that's the and rest of the one, book. And, and one nipple's great. Then he does the other. <laughs> it looks a bit skew if, and he's like, Ugh, just uh, well, this was a great find, and Ragyog frustrated, like, kind of slammed it down away. on the desk, yeah. and it opens up to whatever page <laughs> Greg was hoping I would open it up to <laughs> at this point in the episode. This Let's go in this way. <laughs> uh, it, it, you, you slam it down. Hans was on. incredibly easy to charm. Yes, no, we know that. Um, <laughs> you slam it down. That's news <laughs> to you. <laughs> you thought he was evil. <laughs> you slam it open, and it says, I can't, I can't believe he gave me the nickname Nightshade after I called him Pet. He is weaker of mind than I expected from the suit and suit. But actually I kind of liked it. Um, I do I do kind of dig the nickname though. I've tried on a few outfits to go with uh, Nightshade. Um, I think the leather uh, is the best uh, for when I am playing Nightshade. I think I might uh, dress up and go out on Bucephalus tonight and role play Nightshade in the mist. <laughs> So glad I found this diary. I don't know why this turned around onto me again. Like, You're being this scene, Dan. Shut up. Uh, <laughs> um, okay. Well, okay. Um, you slam it down on the desk and it opens to that bit and you read it. Um, there's a number of entries. There's Strad writes in this diary all the time. There's nothing beyond what you like already know. By the way, the new Chemical Romance album is fucking <laughs> it's brilliant. So it's a masterpiece. <laughs> The meaningless meanderings of an eight thousand year old vampire. The secret, the secret track is so on point. Yeah. Um, Se- the- secret diary of Strad von Zarovich. Fucking the- Hans, that's news. <laughs> God damn it! Sorry, what's that, Dan? You're not in this scene, Dan. Shut up. <laughs> <sighs> As you uh, slam, I feel like there was something important in that. Bit. As you slam the diary down on the desk, missing the most important part of the Hans uh, diary <laughs> entry, which is the first line. You miss it because it's in cursive script. It says, "I charmed Hans." Ha ha ha. Um, <laughs> he's been practicing his calligraphy. Uh, you slam it down uh, on the top of the desk, and the boom of the slamming down uh, of the diary echoes behind you and down the stairwell and you hear it echo down and up that stairwell and as it does you hear multiple uh, doors full of a two bam slam open and you hear that breathing turn into shrieks as a rush of bodies begin to surge up the stairwell ah! behind you uh oh <laughs> <laughs> I grab my holy symbol. No, you don't. Um, We'll just hold you there. Uh. So um, (laughs) in the dining hall uh, downstairs. um, Upstairs? uh, It's downstairs downstairs from where where he was just then. Yeah, just then. Um, So in the main entry hall. So the downstairs um, dining room, but. 
not the upstairs dining room because there are two. Yeah, it's an entry hall. It's kind of been converted into a dining hall. I know that was confused. On like it's an entry chamber. I see that that was dining hall. I do. Originally it was a sunroom, but now it's not because Strand. Anyway, carry on. Yeah, <laughs> fucking the block. I mean, you can build you can build a castle to spec, but that <laughs> just the owner walks in and ruins everything. Right. And Kevin McLeod's gonna criticize it no matter what. You might as well not even try. No grand designs fans out there. Apparently not. Right. Not on this <laughs> podcast. He's quite, I find he's quite reassuring. Stra's trying to come in under budget, so we've decided to turn this entrance hall into multiple mm. different mm. kinds of vestibules. <laughs> <laughs> it's an ambitious project, and I wish him well. But we all know <laughs> it's not going to work. <laughs> He'll be broken, penniless, and begging for loose change in within the year. <laughs> I'm Kevin It's the McLeod. middle of the GFC, and they've got a budget of £12 million. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I kind of feel like you guys aren't in this scene at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> feel Point like taken. you've had yours. I'm just. The uh, two hosts of Grand Designs are actually Vampire Spawn. Uh, <laughs> that's okay, probably uh, true. Um, <laughs> Louise, you are astride Curly on the top of the feasting table. Um, you have a good view over the heads until the, the doors slam shut and the light goes out. Uh, do you have dark vision? I mean, she's usually at the bottom of the sea, so... Yes, you have dark vision and uh, <laughs> you can see um, the, the crowd around you. You can hear and and you can hear their screams. You can hear their panic. You can smell fear in this room. And one by one, people are getting dragged under the mists and, and you can hear screaming horrible deaths as they're torn apart under the mists. Um, Sasha, you are standing on the table uh, near to... Louise. Yeah, so, uh, like, have we heard what happened in the opposite room? Like, Absolutely. Ha- yeah, so as um, Irina fell and then once she eventually hit the ground, uh, the invisibility spell that she had cast on me dissipates and I am then brought back into uh, vision in front of, uh, what's, Louise, that's the one. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, hello. Uh, it is all. <laughs> um, it is all uh, panic okay. around you. Hey, you're Sasha too. I'm Sasha, and I'm on a horse. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Louise knocks you're Sasha old off the horse. fucking <laughs> Sashes. Um. So everyone's getting torn down. Everyone's getting just ripped one by up. one. It's not. It's not happening like all at once, but like. So the crowd are like pressing back towards the table around you. They're sort of ringing you. They're facing outwards. They're full of fear. And every now and then someone gets ripped from above the mist down underneath with a scream. And you hear like the crunching of bones and the tearing of flesh. Tell my wife I love her. Bye. (laughs) I regret nothing. Not there. Uh. Oh, there. Oh, <laughs> 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 um, okay, I don't know really what to do now. Everything's kind of gone uh, uh, right. I was going to cast a spell and then that fucked up. So um, I'm going to blast the door that we came through. That's, uh, that's as good an idea as any. Do it. I cast fireball on the door <laughs> that we came through. Okay. Uh, yes, roll your damage, please. Um, oh, what's that? Um, Louise, it's it's me, Greg, the guardsman. What are, <laughs> what are we gonna do? We're we're trapped in here. We're dying. Uh, everyone, get on the the table as quickly as possible. Um, is this like a coyote ugly situation? Or <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Starts a dirty dance on the table. Shit, William, you're always drunk on guard duty. And this is a, a particularly, uh, that's a that's a quite a good dance. Pouring, no, pouring carry cocktails on. and shots. Carry on, <laughs> carry on. Uh, 29 points of fire damage to the the door that we came through. Um, the the fireball detonates uh, against the door and it it shakes it it scorches it um, and it op- like it pushes it open a crack and it slams shut again. It's held by um, 
You you see there's no bar on this door. Mm. It's held. <laughs> give, me, give me an arcane check, please, okay. Sasha. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, that wouldn't be or both of you. Yep, both of you go for it. Is that five? Not my strong suit. Sasha, give us an arcane check. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I rolled a four, but it's plus nine. <laughs> So that's a 13. Great. Because it's not got a bar on it and because it's shut on its own, you can tell that this door is held closed through arcane means. God damn it. If only I had prepared the spell Dispel Magic, which I do not currently have in my fucking thing. How much do you miss Bragg right now? Not at all. <laughs> what if, what if, uh, Sasha, Sasha, uh, what, what if uh, we uh, didn't uh, think so straightforward with the, with the doors? What if we just created our own door? Okay. Do you have a means of making your own door? Well, uh, I said fireball could be more effective against the wall. Oh, yeah. If only we had a means to produce a door, uh, a hole in the wall. If only, like, all of us together had some sort of means of producing such things. Yes, if we all used all of our labor to push in through the door and make a, well, not the door, as a wall, and make a bigger door next to the other door. Sorry, everyone, it's Smoko. Just going to have to take a minute. Yes. Yeah, just, uh, Sorry. Uh, uh, hot, uh, sausage roll. Who has a sausage roll? Got to have a gasper. Oh, yeah, Got to get a gasper in me. Oh, I need a mother. Hey, can, I, can I bang a does? That'd be bloody great if I could. Um, yeah, God. I'd, I'd really dig that. Um. Okay, so you want to make a hole in the wall next to the door. Do you guys watch Mad Men on the weekend? That's a bloody w- Wiz, that is correct. <laughs> I think uh, we. I, I could also f- f- uh, fan the flames with a, uh, a gust of wind, if that would uh, be so helpful. The way that Don Draper behaves, I'll tell you what, there's something we learned from that guy, I tell you. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so what are you, what are you two doing? Um, <laughs> I'm just not really sure what you're doing. What's the uh, gust of wind? Neither before? am I. Uh, uh, it feels like uh, the the suggestion is is instead of uh, using a fireball or something on the door, we use it on the wall next to it because the door is controlled by magical means. But a wall is not no magical means. <laughs> no need okay. to. Do you want to try that? Yeah. I mean, I'm <laughs> totally keen on casting another fucking third level spell on this. So you know that the wall is stone. Yeah. Um, I oh, yeah, okay. yeah. 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 yeah Not going to work. That seems like a bad idea. I mean, you, you're smart enough to deduce that if the fireball didn't blast through the door, it's probably not going to d- blast through the I'm the totally smart wall. enough for that. I tell you though, Elizabeth Moss is the is she's the best thing in that show. I tell you what, Elizabeth um, Moss, she's uh, she's a revelation. People are dying around you, <laughs> like the the screams that people are not on Smoko. They are Sound fucking freaking out and climbing up on the table around you, and they're pressing back. And as the mist continues to rise, it is engulfing people's sight. It is raising above eye level, I- and as as normal person head height plunges, the screams become more and more regular. I don't know how to dissipate the 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 mist ah. and I can't get out through these doors. Craig, hey Greg. Would a gust of wind blow the mist away? That if you've got gust of wind? We, we uh Louise um, What the f- <laughs> in a panic just like put like Throws down um, her her arms to the side of the of Curly the horse, and uh, and wind just pours out of her 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 hands. And, In a um, long seeping fart, it just yeah. Curly, <laughs> Curly enriches does, yeah. the the gust of wind, um, and it it pushes the mist back around you momentarily. And as it does, oh. it reveals the the forms of vampire spawn around you. And as the mist blows back, the the crowd um, see them and with screams rush forward to attack them. Uh, suddenly. You're in a roiling melee around you as the crowd battle these spawn that have come through the the open doors 
on the sides of this chamber. And what was a cohesive group in the centre suddenly expands out and scatters into broken, small battles with these uh, vampire spawn. As you watch that occur, uh, more mist forms in in the center of the table between you and Louise, Sasha and Louise, uh, a beam of mist appears and lifts up into a, into a tall, misty doorway and Strahd steps through as it dissipates behind. I told you I've been waiting to have you for dinner. <sighs> I, on that note, I think that is a great spot <laughs> to end really? part one I don't know about. Oh. of episode yeah. 38 of <laughs> DPR Does Curse of Strahd. Why is it always Why? my characters that die? And that no is a great, yet. A great oh, spot to end hey. the finale episode. <laughs> yeah, it is. There'll be no more episodes of DPR Does Curse of Strahd. That is genuinely it. We will be uh, on with a new adventure as of next week. Uh, this, uh, if you speak, if you speak to some sort of completion or resolution, well, this is not the show for you because we are done with this adventure. Now. Again, quite anticlimactic. I okay. I uh, said at the yeah. start when you said this is we've we're finally finishing a campaign. DPR never finishes anything. Where where where? And I said. Yeah. Let's not count this chicken before it's hatched. That is what I said. I said, we'll we'll make that celebration when it's over. Just want to put it on the record. Rewind to Greg at the end of the last episode. Hey, guys, snappy two-hour finale. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it was a snappy two hours. I expected more push. I didn't expect an hour of meandering and bullshit. Talking (laughs) at the door (laughs) about secret entrances. Like, you just waited till you got there to discuss your entry plan. (laughs) Like, you even talked about it in town. You're like, oh, should we have a plan? Yeah, we just go straight in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The problem was, was my, my spell then was fucking 10 minutes long. That, that also up. was a problem. My history yeah. check was too good. I had to give them the tour, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes if you've got great, the knowledge, it's time you've got to share it. it doesn't you have been playing with us shitter. this entire time. <laughs> This is a you uh, problem, Greg. I'm playing Greg. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. You really should have for- had the fault. foresight to know that we were going to fuck with everything. Have you heard <laughs> the ancient Navajo parable of the of the frog with the scorpion on its back? Well, we are the scorpion and you are the frog, Greg. And <laughs> that is man. so true. Yeah. And I've been swimming you across the river right? this whole time. Don't expect <laughs> us. And then yeah. you just stab me in the head. You oh, yeah. Carrying us on your back the entire time. Doing <laughs> all of the heavy work. Uh, and I welcome have, to the dice section, everybody. I have a, yeah. I have a question. <laughs> okay. Um, Just one? Oh. Well, yeah. It's potentially, I don't know. Should I have used Gust of Wind earlier in this campaign? I mean, or, yeah, is it a, yes. or is it a two parter like oh, the my. last episode? <laughs> <laughs> you killed me in that moment, Jack. I'm like, I have no wind spells. I'm like, I just, I've got nothing here. All I can yeah, do but, is blast shit or make it a fake. Okay, so you, 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 were very, you were very hurt by that, Dan, but nobody else knew that you were, like, desperately seeking your backstory for a wind spell. <laughs> like, that was No, I know that, but I was looking through my you, spell list. The way you reacted was like, what? God! Jack, obviously, I needed wind. God! <laughs> well, that's I mean, because it's of fucking... course, the miss <laughs> needs yeah. wind. Yeah. I just, I just, yeah. just, I just, like, we tried all these other things with the mist, it didn't seem to work. So I just thought, ah, oh, it's, it's impenetrable. Oh. Mist. There's no way this is ever going to work. My second question. Is, well, my first question <laughs> is um, my actual question. It's a two part. Is uh, <laughs> wall of water? Could the wall of water be uh, made holy? Ooh. Ooh. Who's there to yes. bless it? Oh. Yeah, you need someone to bless it. But yeah, I have bless. Could there I bless go. it? Yeah, That'll absolutely. It. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. Um. <laughs> Save it for part three, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'd say oh, it God. depends on. Uh, it comes down to the DM. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think I, he, it, that's a really cool thing. 
I yeah. think I, that would absolutely, I would let that happen in oh, the moment. Cool absolutely. Idea. Okay. I just want to apologize for my, to my neighbors for yelling so loudly at 11.24 uh, at night. <laughs> mm. Thanks a, for listening to the pod though. Yeah, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, freebies, they're freeloading on the pod. Haven't even, it's not registry as a download. They're just getting. <laughs> the one man version. <laughs> yeah. Just the sunny, <laughs> yeah, the, the sunny track. This is the sunny fringe show of the pod where he does a one man <laughs> show. Well, imagine what my neighbors are getting. They just think you've lost Me it gone. and you think ah! you're sunny. It's <laughs> like silence for 10 minutes followed by like a weird little voice calling out. <laughs> yeah. 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 A, a person talking to themselves. I'd like to say it's unusual except for the pod, but it, it well, it's, you know, that's about, that's about my, that's, a, that's my 11.25, I gotta say. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the, um, the bit with Irina and Sunny. Yeah, that was cool. Mm. That yeah. was cool. Mm. Is there so, some further explanation needed there? Because through yeah, there was a yeah. chat happening. Yeah, I think so. So when text chat, um, when the sword became sentient, it had started, but it needed a kickstart. And much um, like this podcast, if you want to support the show, jump on Patreon. <laughs> it needed a Kickstarter. Sorry, um, it needed a kickstart, and uh, Irina is a sorcerer, right? She has arcane power flowing through her blood, what? which is linked to her soul. Tatiana was also a sorcerer. And when she cut her finger on the sword, the sword, which had been drawing life energy from people's blood as they were slain, drew Tatiana's arcane power from her, which enlivened the blade mm. into a sentient being. And then... Mm. How Sunny got there is yet to be disclosed in part two. Uh -huh. <laughs> cool. Does it have anything to do with share? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, she was sharing it around. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> what other burning questions can we answer in the dissection? Um, I um I was. What's this rash? Tell me, what's this rash? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I found that intensely intimidating. Um, I I. I just think I maybe because it's the like it's a very final sort of thing that we've got to be on a certain level of like ingenuity or, or or thinking of things, and I did not feel qualified in any way at all. Uh, and I was like, oh, okay, I guess I'm picking up the sword now. Um, so that was that was a little stressful, I'll be honest. Can I just yeah, say, I think we all reacted to the finale differently and, and most of us reacted in a kind of silly way and, and some of us mm. reacted in a drunken way. And I'm going to say there are no <laughs> wrong answers. You know, it's yeah. all good. Okay. It's all yeah. good. <clears throat> yeah. I think, I think in like this sort of situation, just action is all that's needed. Like you don't have to worry about doing the wrong thing. You just have to do something. Something. Yeah, but because we've been if, if so you, burnt by getting like by dying and like yeah, getting I mean, if massive you make a hit dumb points choice, sort of. Yeah, if you make a dumb choice in Curse of Stride, you do die. Or you. I mean, I just don't die. know what is a dumb choice and what's not. Like the, it is much more. Of you a, do it. I mean, okay, let me put it this area. way: picking up the sword that you've got like a long entangled backstory with—that's a good idea, right? Firing a fireball at a ten-foot thick stone wall. Less of a good idea, <laughs> but it was it was an idea though. It was right. an idea. Right. It was action, which was was good. Better than chat. Um, mm. Action speaks louder than words. Still, I was just trying to yes and the good the option was put there, and I just went well. Anyone's... I fired at the door, thinking oh. maybe it could burn the door, but then you know that did it did it did burn the door, just not enough. I think it's interesting too that uh, probably, I don't know, some of us, we may have added some pressure on ourselves for the finale. Maybe not. There's a little bit of a mm. sense of um, wanting to do these characters justice. But I also mm. think splitting, I think being split up. Lovely. In the end there, for me anyway, mm. like it's like, oh, damn, it's just me. Like it, um, so yeah. you really feel that the story is on you. And not that it's necessarily mm. a, I've got to be funny or I've got to do stuff, but yeah. it's an interesting thing to do when for a lot of the, um, and this is just a comment, it's not, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there's nothing about any, yeah, it's just, um, it's just interesting when the whole show we've done, we've been together a lot of the time. 
Yeah. And, and it's, I, I, it's really, I think it's actually really interesting technique to use in the finale to be like, mm. you are in Strahd's castle. Mm. And your power totally. is depleted. It's I fucking like it. great. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, that's, as a as yeah. a player, it's quite. Whoa. Okay. I preferred one on one. Actually, I think I was yeah. more paralyzed when I had too many people. Kind of. Well, like, that's hurtful. One on one. I mean, I'm I'm there too, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Oh, I get it. I get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I think when it was like, just it's, me. <laughs> it, it's a it's. I felt like it was a little bit hard because it's like I've been. Uh, so far in like, you know, you, you're not interacting and, you know, other than the occasional gag and that sort of stuff, but like you're trying to give, um, you know, the, the floor to the other players and then right at the end sort of then it comes back to you after mm. like, I don't know, an hour or so and you kind of <laughs> like, oh, shit, oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, what, what can I do again? You know, like mm. yeah. um, that was kind of interesting. Yeah, I don't know. It's an interesting yeah. challenge, I guess. I mean, yeah, so you had an hour to read through your spells and you still didn't know what to do. Is that what you <laughs> <laughs> I mean, didn't want to say Ooh. it, but... Uh... No, look, the, the whole idea of splitting everyone up was to add that fear factor, right? Yeah, because sure. you've defeated Stride, you've defeated Baba Yaga, you've, you've gone through, you've ripped through Barovia and this is a horror campaign and, I, you know, I really wanted yeah. to engender that, that fear at the end um and i don't think like i don't think anyone's making bad choices or anything as except for throwing fireballs like, hang walls, on you apparently. um it's... well you didn't do that yeah you didn't do <laughs> we that chose, right uh, we discussed it you could have done it it was a bad idea the thing is like i think that i don't know i don't know if this will come across in the listen but I felt like the immediacy of the death of the people around you wasn't really played into the actions that you were taking. Bullshit. No, so I disagree I, with that. I disagree. Like that's, okay. the, that's the main reason that I was like, well, I've got to do something because people are fucking, I could fuck around for another 10 minutes, but like mm. that's, mm. that's, that was my main reason to yeah. go, to go and do something. I was like, well, no, no, you're right. No one's and, doing and anything. All right, shit, got to go. Like, you know, yes, you did a hundred percent on that, but I don't think everyone felt that immediacy. Mm. Um, you know, uh, I, I guess I'm trying to put extra pace on that situation again, which I guess I didn't like. I wanted to make it an anxious situation. I wanted to make oh, it a I scary situation, anxious. and I wanted it to be a pressure situation. Mm. Um, and I don't know. It, that's obviously worked differently for different people, but we've also got to remember we're not finished, right? Mm -hmm. We're mm. still in that pressure situation. We still have a lot, like a fair bit to go to get through this space. There's more after this. There's a yeah. second half. So on on that, I think that 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 for the first half of that, well, first quarter of that game, it was all a bit like. Tra la 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 la. We'll get to the end of yeah. the episode. Da, 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 da. It'll work out. And then, like, I don't know. There is, like, we still got to play hard. You're still got to play hard. We still got to, yeah. you know, overcome something in order to f resolve um, or die, die in the attempt. Um, yeah. So that was kind of, it was, it was really, it was really lovely, that, I think, Greg, the way you about halfway through flipped the script on that and made it and, and was able to turn it from being, dumb silly like take the piss to and, and 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 like credit to you leaning into that when it was time for that but then to be able to kind of then turn the stakes up when you did um oh, yeah, yeah. no, no pun intended hey, um hey. Uh, but you know to be able to do that it was it was really um impressive well done thanks man i yep. find it really hard to switch us from that silly mode into the horror setting and it's hard to like push because everyone's having a joke and everyone's got jokes backed up as well it's like there's mm. this run whenever you try and get in this like all these mm. jokes flowing oh, on man. You, you've done an amazing job of keeping us in line and still keeping it in in that horror world yeah thanks and man. i think that that contrast is the real strength of the campaign personally yeah. in my yeah. opinion i think it's yeah it makes it better and it, yeah, i think too. you're right greg it would be interesting to hear if it comes across in like listening back whether you know 
the urgency that we felt or not or yeah. how you felt as a dm whether we picked up on it and and but i also wanted to because it's kind of an extended format of the show we were like mm. it's one big finale let's go so i for me i was kind of going oh this is the final showdown and then yeah. to have strad pull that trap and disappear and the, like the bell force was like holy fuck this has just gotten way more intense which i think is great and yeah, I, I don't know. I think um, it's not even wrong, but we all kind of felt. Like uh, I'm kind of like I, I'm struggling with the whole. People didn't feel the urgency. Of yeah, it, maybe maybe to that's, be honest, like yeah, maybe that's uh, me. Um, no, we, no I, I like. I, I agree with you, Greg. I don't think anyone was doing any action. There was no action taken. Well, for ages but, and ages and ages. But being but being split up prevents certain before people, we were split up. Before we were split up. Before we were split up, there was no action being taken for. Ages, yeah. We I, didn't do anything yeah. but talk for about ten minutes, leading into getting into the castle and in the castle. About trying we to talk about what we were going to do, talk about what we we're going to do, talk about what we we're going to do. Nothing happened until people started disappearing, and then even then, it took us a little while. So I, I don't know. I think it needed yeah. that in order to fucking light the fire under us. For sure. I'm interested though to know what Danny ha- has to say about the sense of urgency because I don't know. Seems well, like you upset <laughs> well i don't know it it kind of it it is i don't know like the whole kind of speaking about like f- throwing fireballs against you know brick walls and all that sort of shit and you know you guys kind of taking the piss it's it's like well we're in a situation where we're trying to figure out what we can do and it's not like we're then going you know, oh, well, don't give a shit about the people that are uh, are in front of us that are dying. We're trying to figure out a way to get out of the situation. Yeah. Um, when Sorry, there's an invisible like enemy in a mist that we can't see, um, you know, see through, we, we don't know what we're fighting. So we're just trying to find the, the situation and, and figure it out. Like I, I, I don't know. I, I take, I yeah, I take offense to the fact that it's like, oh, there's no urgency there, or that, you know, that we're yeah. we're doing it wrong, or or yeah, something. Yeah, Danny, you were trying your best. You were actually like under yeah. the chopping block, on the chopping block, and you were trying to find a way out of it, right? Yeah, yeah. and that was like that was like ten, fifteen minutes at the end. I think like. There's there's two points I was trying to make there that maybe I've conflated when I've spoken it because the fireball against the wall was a joke about to to make the point about the thing and it also wasn't your move, Danny. Um, no, I know. So it's not it's not a, a nitpick at you, and you had uh, I wasn't, a gap I wasn't of joking. like no, I know. I that's it, you had a gap of like fifteen minutes at the end. Mm. So the the urgency stuff I was talking about back at the start a meal like you're referencing when we were coming in and the crowd was moving around you and um there's another thing that happens as well that whenever i run an rp heavy game or whenever i run a game i feel like the pace is too low because in the hot seat, my mind's going a hundred miles an hour, and I want the the episode to have pace. I want it to be interesting and exciting, right? And so, any gap, I feel like the story's moving. It just not even gap. It doesn't even need a gap. I just feel them often feel the story's not moving along fast enough. But when I listen back to the episode afterwards, actually, it's a great pace. Mm. Um, and, you know, I know a lot of DMs keep notes that, like, just slow down, idiot, do more description um, for themselves behind their screens. And that's, um, yeah, that's that's something that I feel. But, like, I guess my expect, like, we all layer our expectations onto this finale, right? Everyone's mm-hmm. come in with different ideas. That's what we're talking about. You, you guys are feeling anxious about it or you're you know you're gone the silly route or the serious route or whatever it is my um pre thoughts about this was that it would be a much more direct hard decision making moving forward and that the the 
the 37 games that came before this informed you that when everything feels good, it's not good in Barovia. When you think mm. you're there, you're not there. And you, if you do, you, you can still die. And, um, and I, you know, that you have to take down Strad in his own house, I, you know, is going to be dangerous be and difficult. Yeah. It should, should be hard. So, um, yeah, I'm sorry that you felt like that, Danny. I was just, I was just making a joke about the fireball on the wall, um, and it's not no, particularly it's directed at you, mate. No, that's all good. Does it? There's an interesting. Think... Sorry, Ben. Oh no, I was, I was just going to say uh, it's. I mean, gone on for a, a little while already, but maybe it's an extended dissection as well. But there's, there's an interesting sorry, have a parallel to now. make there. <laughs> I think, yeah, with with um what what you bring to a game as dm because you've been you've been holding on to all of this and you can't talk to us about it at all mm. um mm. and what you bring to it as as a player um i i think it's i don't really even know if i have a point to make but i think that that's that's quite an interesting um yeah contrast there um yeah i don't know i don't know it's late <laughs> It's late. I got nothing interesting to say. <laughs> Disagree, Ben. Oh. You, you've always got a good time. Yeah, that's a good observation, man. I think we all bring different things to the the game from different perspectives, and that's you know. It does hearten me that everyone appears to be to struggle with it as much as I do. Hard out, hundred percent. This is one of the things. Um, right? Yeah. Like, it's oh, hard it was everyone else things. kind of shitting themselves, being like, I, yeah, I don't know, because you can, uh, you can. That's try. why I went silly. It was like uh, I'm staring down Ben, being like, "Come on, Ben, give me something." <laughs> I don't know. Like I, it just then, uh, it was um yeah it was it was know, very challenging and I mean at certain points I'm like this is too hard I just want to be like Greg be nice to me like I I, th- I had thought <laughs> about Tell me that I'm whole doing well. kind of I'm scenario very type a. and like trying to you know we'll we'll do the illusion fucking floor and shit and then it was like oh fuck in the moment shit ten minutes. That's not that going to work. Very now that's funny, different. That was Fuck, very okay, funny. now we've got to do something else. And then it's was like you're scrambling trying to figure thing? it out. No. Yeah. No, I was not on board with the no, illusion yeah, thing. I, don't, I think we didn't really ever finish that conversation, well, which is part of the hilarity of Dice Paper Roll. We start, yeah. we fuck around planning. I was into planned. it. I was like ready. And yeah. I was not ready last why, time. Why but weren't when you, you actually, no, no. why weren't you into it, Ben? Uh, I and just more thought that importantly, it was... and more importantly, why wasn't why wasn't that raised? Uh, yeah, yeah. Because because <laughs> okay, well, I'll answer the second part first. Because oh. dice paper roll pinballs around like fucking multi ball <laughs> <laughs> on a regular basis, true. and tonight was no different. Um, so it's very easy for things to to go one way and you let it go and then by the time you think oh I'll bring that back it's not it's gone you know it's gone yeah and yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It, you know you you sure. can either find a way to bring it up again later or it doesn't matter anymore because it wasn't that important plan to attack strad maybe a little bit more important in terms of why ragyog wasn't so worried and I think I did slip it in there somewhere I just thought it seemed a bit too um I I like a bit too complicated for something where we just need to go in to attack Strahd. But maybe that was me as a player metagaming going, let's just, this is the finale. Let's just go in and find him. Confront. And attack him. And, it, and yeah. see how that worked out? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Perfectly, didn't it? I, yeah. think, I think there's also a, a, an aspect where it's like I kind of, I couldn't think of a better offer. So it was like, oh, okay. Mm. A hundred percent. And I'm not saying it was a bad idea. Yeah. I just, I it's wasn't sure it was a about it. lovely comedy and yeah. like cool idea. Mm. Mm. Fuck if yeah. If we had and the 10 minutes, it would have been beautiful. It would have been awesome. It's such it a shame it was there. 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. You could have fudged it, Danny. But I'd like, I, I, and also I, was, I didn't have a better idea. So what am I going to say? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I was like, shocked when you went for it, even though you'd read the 10 minutes and then you went <laughs> for it. Like you were hoping I would monologue for 10 minutes. Yeah, why not? Come on, give us a 10 minute monologue. Greg ad lib for ten minutes. For not me. literal I mean, ten minutes. He's heard. Like, he's know, heard many other episodes of the show, Greg. So he knows. You so can he do knows. It. He knows. You're you can pretty do capable. It. You are. Um, I was oh, going to say, uh, uh, and I think we should uh, 
I, I, I was going to say about like the beginning, I feel like there's an aspect of it where it's like that silliness kind of built into it because there was a hesitation to like figure out any possible oh, way to not actually yeah. go into the castle. It was, it was there. It was there because of nerves. Like, yeah, I can't yeah, do anything. That's it was cool. nerves. Totally. I don't want to, I don't want to like, it, there's going to be traps and shit in there and I don't know what they're going to be. I'm going to die yeah. on the other side of this door. I'd rather this is like end. keep we talking about as much like fun out of yeah. this possible too. You know? the mm. Yeah, but yeah, there's that hesitancy. Scared. You don't know what you're walking into. Yeah. 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 More yeah, dumb jokes I can make the further away the finish of this cool thing <laughs> we're doing is. You know, that's that's part <laughs> of it as well. Yeah. Mm. I'm still glad we were able to find some moments of like depth and interest and and, and character Fuck and, yeah. and, and like yeah. emotion. That was I lovely. think that's going to be a fantastic yeah, part one. Right. I think that, like when yeah, yeah totally. the, the thing is afterwards I like I always tear it apart, particularly when I'm DMing, but even when I'm playing, I just tear my own head apart until Ben uploads the rough copy and then I listen back and and I always think that one was shit. That one was slow or um, and then until we listen back, it's like that, the, the episode before this one, I was like, that's so long. And the RP was so clunky. And I, like, I just did the same voice over and over again. And then we, I listen back and it's a fucking hilarious yeah. episode. Can yeah. I, I, can I let you in on a secret though, Greg, I'm not doing any editing to the pace of things really. Like very rarely what we hear in the end is what we got. No, I know. Yeah, I know, but that doesn't stop yeah, me from thinking, ripping yourselves apart. Yeah, yeah, maybe thinking, part of it reflecting on it. And, and I think the canned like, laughter, a la Big Bang Theory, that's a treat <laughs> for our show. Yeah, <laughs> we totally. should. Maybe yeah. part of it. Just I remember what I was going to say before. Maybe part of that, and obviously I think it is, uh, is the the weight of expectation you bring to the game uh, on yourself as a DM and a player. I think, and particularly mm. in the finale, that. That level of mm. expectation, I think, can um, can induce that uh, ripping yourself apart. This is during good, and after. This is a good topic, or several uh, topic for several maybe shows for for you and um, for Lauren and Jack for for um, side questions. You know, side questions. Side like, this questions. Is, yeah. This is fucking yeah. interesting. Like, I love the yeah. idea of. Um, uh, the the fact that you find the game and the story in the middle somewhere between all of us you know there's mm. the, there's the, there's we what we go in the plan that we go in with both imagined and written down and whatever and then it's 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 somewhere in between and we kind of we got to we got to wait till we're all together in mm. order to create that and whatever it is is what it is you know like mm. it's what it might have been sure maybe in our heads, but like what it actually is, 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 is pretty, um, is, is pretty magic. Like it's, we, you'd, you'd never, you'd never come to the conclusions. You'd never find the arcs. You'd never go down the little rabbit holes that we go down and, 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 and find meaning in ludicrousy in the way that we do without <laughs> the collective. You know, I think that's something that's, it's hard. It's tender and it's vulnerable. And I think we're all getting, really good at uh letting go and jumping in so mm. well well done to us all mm. yeah yeah a little kiss on the yeah that was that was yeah, very nice. big and tough yeah, yeah thanks hard. everyone it was yeah. a great first part and i look forward to finishing you all off in the second <laughs> yeah uh, mm. for, for, to, for i'm looking forward to a very dusty finish yeah <laughs> <laughs> A on that, dusty, waxy Lathander's bone. On that note. Oh, God. On that note. Uh, uh, lovely, lovely podcasting for you all. Uh, hope you enjoyed our show. Thanks for sticking um, with us, everybody. Yeah. 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 We'll see you for our, our final. Probably only a sneaky three yeah. or four to go. Yeah. Final <laughs> yeah. point two. Yeah. We'll Let's be back here again. It. This is like how Going artists name their, one more. their files. Final. We're going to get to Yeah, final, final draft final to draft. final, yeah. final. Yeah. yeah. Final final, 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 final. Version 27, yeah. yeah. I, Episode 42. Yeah. My local recording yeah. has gone for four hours and six minutes. So on that note. Oh, my <laughs> Bye. goodness. <laughs> Bye. 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 Four hours. <laughs>